imminently. We are live. We are live. We are live. <laughs> Welcome to season four, episode one, and twenty twenty. The start of a new year. The start of a new season. It's all starting. People are starting Bible reading plans. We I'm have Simon. Here. Simon. Simon. Yeah. Simon is here. Welcome, Simon. Thanks, guys. Late. That's, That's right, right Simon. This is a new year. All your past transgressions have been wiped clean. Yes. Well, apart from that one. Oh, hey, 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 I say this year. Oh, I repent immediately. <laughs> uh, we hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year. And have you guys had a good Christmas and New Year? Yeah. Any, anything special good. other than generic? Yep, it was great. We had good food. Well, for us, this was our first Christmas as a family of four. So that was fun. Oh. Hey! Congratulations! Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. It How old is your? What's the name of your? Sorry, what's Noah. Noah. How old is Noah? And he, well, he's seven weeks now. Oh! So he's doing. He's doing well. Did he <coughs> enjoy Christmas dinner? Um. Yes. He always has the same meal every single day, <laughs> doesn't he? So. Uh, <laughs> But you know what, my other son had Ruben. Yeah. For Christmas dinner, I probably shouldn't say this, but he, he had um, a, a, a wrap a and wrap. a few crisps, like a plain wrap, nothing on it. What? You just like refused to. Just an empty, like, yeah, wrap tortilla wrap with crisps in and it. No, no, the crisps were separate. <laughs> you just <laughs> ate the wrap and then a was few, he staging some form of protest against Christmas dinner? Or? It's the uh, it's the you know the challenge of discipleship. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your post on that, I guess. Oh, we had Amy and I hosted our first Christmas dinner oh, since lovely. being um, since oh, getting married. Yeah, oh, we did ham. I cooked the ham. It was good fun. You did it, but we had my my parents all from India. Was it oh, good? Oh, nice. Yeah, as yeah, in well, ham. Yeah, I think so. How about that? I enjoyed it. Um, did you do like the, the coke, coke, coke ham? Give me a, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I cooked it in coke oh, and great. then give it a, a mustard and treacle the, glazing. The drink. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full fat sugar. Yeah, it's got yeah different kind of thing, isn't it? Christmas ham. Yeah, Christmas Sam. Um, any New Year's resolutions that you want to share? Oh, wow. Um, I decided last January that I would not have this in the bedroom at night time. Um, so I kept it in the kitchen, which is if nice. If you're listening to the audio version, Simon just pointed to his phone. Yes, so no phone in the bedroom. Um, but I found actually in the morning, sometimes I'd make my coffee before I read the Bible, and I'd, I'd just pick up my phone, and I'd, oh, I missed some texts from last night, or I'd look at Instagram, or check some stories. And sometimes it'd be like 45 minutes later, or I'd sit down to read the Bible. So now my New Year's resolution, and it was last year, was switch off my phone, um, off, off. Um, and then go to bed and don't switch it on until I've had breakfast with the kids. Um, yeah, so I did that most of last year, but wow. that's the main thing I want to carry on, which is nice actually, just having no notifications the last bit of the night and nothing in the morning. I guess the question everybody's asking you is, what do you use for your alarm clock? Um, I spent £10 in Argos and oh. bought an, yeah, yes. just bought an alarm and it goes at the same time every could day. actually buy a physical it's alarm what everyone clock. did before. <laughs> Did you let like, you know? <laughs> no, no, I must have my phone in my room. You let all this stuff into your into your like mind and head, and it's just like no, just buy an alarm clock. It's fine. Yeah, or buy a Kindle. Yeah, if you like reading <laughs> before you go to bed. Well, yeah, or buy physical. Still quite an expensive alarm clock. A Kindle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because people like some people read before they go to bed. That's true. So I read before I go to bed. Or you could read a book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> buy a book instead of reading on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lots of good reasons to not have your phone. But uh, even like we're talking about this, sorry if this gets a bit intimate for my for our five viewers. But People even just like the, the, <laughs> the 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 few minutes we have together before we go to bed, before we go to sleep, yeah, um, just going. conversing. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you could just end up like what, yeah, like scrolling yeah, yeah. through your phone or reading before you fall asleep uh, and other things. But just getting like a few minutes to get sometimes it's, like, it's a good ten or fifteen minutes just mm. like lie better and chat and and yeah. So we've made a, we we're making. We're working on it we're to like actively spend time talking to each other and connecting and building our friendship it's a start of a healthy bed. marriage that is it nice. is it's building a friendship is so important in your marriage nice. tim keller keeps saying that just build your friendship and i think that's one of the goals we set for 2020 is we will really work on our friendship in our marriage oh, that's uh, really good. this year just enjoying one another's company so we had like three days in amsterdam at the start of the year just the oh, two of us i saw that Oh, oh, nice. So oh. good. Three can days I just in. ask, why have kids. you got a more like golden microphone and mine's more bronze? Is that like wow. I'm amazed that you've gold, noticed. silver, bronze? Because they've stopped making that microphone in gold, so we needed a third one. So we had to buy something that looked the closest to that. 
and it is a different it is a different microphone sorry i've just exposed you yeah. <laughs> but i notice these things yeah it's oh, amazing. Just, no it's appropriate you're yeah. first you're on the podium and me and matt are gold third. standard yeah gold yeah. standard of broadcasting <laughs> johan <laughs> I, did we even choose which mic goes where i think we just yeah, you know you did it's fine <laughs> don't, don't play it humble no it's good <laughs> right what are we talking about today? well we've spent a few minutes waffling um this storm at Emmanuel, there's, a, there's lots happening um, yeah. this year. So uh, our prayer rhythms for 2020 are significantly changing this year. And I'd like to talk about that a bit later. Mm. Um, but we're launching a series on prayer called Hearing God. Well, we launched a series on prayer called Hearing God uh, last Sunday. And we had the wonderful Glenn Scrivener mm. talk to us about how we can hear God through the Bible. Um, do you guys have mm. any quick summary thoughts? Anything that stood up in the preach? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always a brilliant time of the year and a good reminder about getting into God's Word and just the fact that God has chosen to um, reveal His Word to us. I mean, that, that's so easy to take for granted, isn't it, that, that we have a Bible, it's sitting right there, we can read the, the, the words of God expressed to us. And, um, so, and Glenn sort of used the uh, analogy of it being like a, a love letter that it's not so much about the sort of we prioritize the Bible because it's so well written or it's so interesting. A lot of it, you know, honestly, is not interesting because it's very um, different from our context. We find it difficult to read sometimes, but actually the the big message of it and what it's trying to communicate to it is the person of God to mm. us. And uh, yeah, that was that was, I guess, what Glenn was was focusing on interpreting all of the Bible through the lens of Christ, how we kind of do that, um, how we understand it, how we get to know God better by by being in his word day yeah. by day and that sort of thing. And so when we're all hopefully kick-starting our new Bible plans for the year, um, it's a timely reminder. Are you guys doing a Bible in a year plan? Yeah, I should have said that actually. That is another resolution. So I'm doing, I'm not doing the whole Bible in a year, I'm just doing Bible every day and I'm going through the second of the three tracks uh, from Ezra all the way through to Malachi. Um, yeah, so wait, wait, you're doing about the Bible <coughs> in the year. You're not doing the Bible year. I'm yeah, doing Bible so. every day. Yeah. So if you go to wearemanual.com forward slash Bible, we put together three different tracks. Um, one is the Old Testament law up to like two chronicles. Um, one is Ezra, which is more about the exile and, and um, prophetic stuff and prophets. And then the third option is the New Testament and the Psalms. We've grouped out the New Testament. So pick one of those. If you want to do all three, you'll cover the whole Bible in a year. Um, I did that last year. This time I want to focus a mm. bit more on Ezra um, forwards. So yeah, that's what I'm doing every day. You look very confused about that. <laughs> yeah, because it's not the Bible plan that I'm looking at on our website. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It's just laid out differently. So it's at the moment it's Genesis, Ezra, and Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But do you finish the whole Bible if you... If you read all of those, that, yeah. that'll be the whole Bible in a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. just doing um, the Ezra one. Oh, okay. It's like the second so half just, of the Old Testament. So yeah. you won't read the whole Bible in a year? No. I'm with you. Yeah. No. And you can do the New Testament in a year as well? Yeah. Great. It's Brilliant. New Testament and the Psalms, yeah. Brilliant. Um... So let's say somebody's listened to this preach about hearing God through the Bible. I guess the first question that you might have is, how do I actually hear God? This is, about, this is a book that was written, broadly th speaking, thousands of years ago, compiled a few hundred years ago, um, also written to a people mm -hmm. group from different cultures, different areas, different times. Um, and it very much seems to be their narrative and their story, at least in the Old Testament. Um, how does that apply to me today? Mm -hmm. How can I hear God today? through the stuff that was written in the Bible. Mm. It says in Hebrews that the word of the Lord is living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. So of all the millions, billions of books in the world, um, the Bible says of itself, makes a claim it's living, it's actually alive. So although it might be printed on the same paper as another book or the same ink, um, the actual word and message is alive. Um, and with the Bible, this is personally speaking, as you sit and open it and start to slowly just read and listen, that's very much been my testimony. These words do come alive to you. So it answers your question, how? Um, it's someone asked Steph Listen once, how do you read the Bible in one word, what do you say? And he said, slowly. Um, which I think is quite helpful. If I'm reading my chapter of Ezra, I will read it through, but that'll take about two minutes. But I'll go through just really prayerfully before the Holy Spirit say, God, come and speak to me today. I want to open up my heart. I'll try and 
go through a process of just clearing my mind if there's lots of stuff going on I can't actually <coughs> focus on on God or the or what the scriptures are saying I'll read it slowly and what I found is sometimes I'll read a word or a phrase and it will be like um, almost like the words sort of jump out at me or they just like hit a you know, I'm a guitarist, so it's almost like they hit a chord in my heart. It's just like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know why sometimes, or sometimes it's really clear, like, oh man, that, that phrase is literally means something really, really to me mm -hmm. right now. So um, even this morning in Ezra, um, I talked about Ezra, it said that the king granted everything he asked. And it's beginning of the year, and I'm thinking about impossible lists and other stuff, and it just, just stood out to me. It's like, man, this is what we have in Christ. Everything we ask, there's a promise here that he will do. I should really just take this to heart. And I knew that was God stirring. It wasn't like I heard a voice in my ear saying, mm. everything you are. It's just, it's just the words themselves. Mm. And I knew, yeah, this is, this is God's voice. This is living, this is active. Um, I, I should assume this is him, not just, it's not the enemy right now. This is God's word. Um, so I got my journal and just wrote that down. I thought, God, what are you saying here? And I felt as a, um, the F like feeling not just thoughts there was a Holy Spirit sort of stirring me mm. um, to just think about wh what are you asking God for this year and that came out from a verse in Ezra but yeah I would read through slowly and ask God to speak to me and it would be like just sometimes a word or a phrase just I can't really move on from it I was just mm. like I think you're saying something here but you mentioned mm. something you mentioned the impossible list um, what, is, <coughs> what is that impossible list? Is um, so that's something we started in Emmanuel about six, seven years ago um, as part of kicking off the new year, encouraging people to seek God to do the impossible, um, which which he says, four, Jesus says four or five times in the Gospels, um, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And I think it was a, Joel, a preach that Joel did like a few years ago about he can do anything, let's seek him this year. And I think we just decided let's not just pray through the mundane which is important but if he could do anything and he says to you like what do you want me to do what would you say what would you ask him for so i think as a church we've got in the habit of most january's to let's write down something just not just like oh i'd like to see move here but just darn right impossible mm -hmm. things this would have to be god mm -hmm. and so anna and i have learned every january just to, to make that list and commit to kind of praying for it at parts throughout the year so is that brilliant can i just say one thing yeah, the, um the, the sort of question what relevance does you know does the, what the bible has to say to my life and, and i want to hear god for me i think that that type of question speaks a lot about where we're coming from when we approach the bible which i think Great. is very very off i think mm -hmm. we um uh, we we d our default is to think about right I want to know what to do in my life and mm. thinking about my life and the <clears throat> the idea behind that is well I'm the most important person in the world and so if there's a spiritual book it's going to be about helping me to be the best me or whatever mm. and that's completely the opposite message of what the Bible is because the Bible is about God is the Bible primarily is revelation of who God is yeah. And so primarily God is speaking about himself mm. because he wants us to get to know him and so actually to approach the Bible thinking not yes there are passages in the bible and we do believe as, as simon has described that god the truth about god touches our lives mm. and affects our lives and speaks into our situations and and helps us to navigate life but it's that's because it's about god and mm. what he's done for us and even when simon was just saying that there he kind of saying well this this is a truth oh yeah that's mine in christ because christ has changed my life this is how it plays out now mm. for me but the object, the most important person there is Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not my mm -hmm. agenda and what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. the fact is God is speaking about himself all the time mm -hmm. and it's us getting on board and that's the kind of thing I need Brilliant. to listen to so rather cool. than thinking about my little agenda. Yeah, 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 that's so helpful. I think the other big thing to remember is it's about a community of people. It isn't just written for the individual. Yeah. It's, it's stories of, of groups of people. Uh, and even in, in the New Testament, it's yeah. letters that were written to the church. So it's mm -hmm. very much being intended for it to be read out to a, a community mm -hmm. uh, of, of people. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, approach other books in the same way. You know, there's lots of history in the Bible. Mm. You wouldn't pick up a history of the Second World War and think, all right, what's, where's the application for my life here? <coughs> because it's not about you, yeah. but it does help you to understand those people. Really and it does reveal something about the times mm. and the people involved. Now, in the Bible, it's the times of people involved in that outside of context, but God is there as well. So there's always truth very much relationship to draw with out, God. and that yeah, applies yeah. to mm. us. And there's the ways in which, you know, even if you read a history about whatever, you can find yourself in there. Oh, that's, they're like me, and they went through this, and that's like mm. me. And there's things you can draw out. But it's, 
you wouldn't approach other books in the same way so yeah, let's yeah. let's take the bible the way the bible is written to us not just wh- what we can get for us yeah i think one of the decisions i've made actively over the past few months is to increase the amount i pray for our church in my in my times with god in my prayer times in the morning um and then often just using some of the the verses in scripture to pray into our life as a church and when it talks about again the verses on love and community and unity mm-hmm. just praying those into our church may the church be a place where we experience all those things but also um even stuff that you may feel God speaking to you uh, asking the question is God speaking is this things that that I'm feeling in my heart or I'm hearing God is that for the church and is that something that I feel like God's intended for the church and then I bring the mm-hmm. bring, I'll share that with Joel or with Steve Horn or or, or the people and I think just consciously making that decision of when I'm reading scripture and when I'm praying mm. applying it through the lens of the church like hey I'm part of th- I'm part of this body I have a role to play in this body mm. and my praying for this body is 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 very very significant yeah you know we've got big dreams for this church and we've got um desires of seeing God's kingdom advance mm-hmm. through the church mm-hmm. in this in our city and in, in cities abroad and just very much praying into that so yes Lord make me fruitful uh and in my life but also make our church fruitful yeah, and make yeah. all that we do Brilliant. bear fruit and I pray for my brothers and sisters I pray for the, the guys who lead our church and yeah I've, I found that been quite a, a gear change in my own life um, mm. last year so go, uh, going back to other questions that we might have about hearing God how do we um, Glenn talked about the whole Bible being about Christ um, but for much of the Old Testament it's not that obvious how are we supposed to find Christ when most of us don't have a degree in theology somebody sent me this question mm. How do you find Christ in the Old Testament? Simply mm. reading the Old Testament. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it plays into the fact that the we've referred to already. The Bible is um, not an easy book. Uh, there's there's bits in it. It's the message of the Bible is simple. It's simple enough for a child to understand. But there is complexity. There is history to it that is very different than than ours. And so it does require does require some work and I think um, to really uh, yes um, yes not all of us are are called to be in full-time ministry not all of us are called to study theology and not all of us have the capacity or ability to do that but I do believe we can all study the Bible Mm. and that 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 we are called to do that you know there's that opportunity for us there and yes it's not Christ in the Old Testament is some sometimes difficult to find or or in your thinking reading through long chapters uh, of the the Old Testament thing what how is this relevant what is this about I can't see Christ at all here and and that and there's there's no shortcut Around that, another to, to take time and to look at commentaries and and mm-hmm. and and learn from good trusted teachers and put some hours into to doing that over a time. You know, we live in a time that is n- there's never been a time more privileged than us with the resources that are available mm-hmm. to help us mm-hmm. to study the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, there are generation gone by that would look at what we have now available to us in order to study the Bible and think. Surely you're studying the Bible, right? Mm. You've got you've got this opportunity to do it, and th- th- there's always that there for us. There's so much opportunity for us to do it, whether you are educated, uneducated, old, young, whatever context y- you're in. Um, studying the Bible is part of what it means to be a Christian. Mm. We should read the Bible devotionally. We should also <coughs> take some time in our life to study the Bible, get mm. to know the Bible better, because we're getting to know God better. Mm. The whole the rest of our eternity is going to be appreciating God and getting to know him that's what mm. that's what life is about mm. and so let's let's start that now and dig in sometimes like digging into God is kind of hard um, but the Bible in, invites us to do that and think there is treasure to be found and it's not just all on the surface mm. that's that is just what the Bible's like mm. any any good resources that you can recommend on this the Bible. <laughs> Any good um, I mean, uh, get, the Bible. <laughs> getting getting a good study Bible yeah. is a good place to. I mean, so the ESV, the, ESV study Bible is the good, NLT it? study yeah, Bible, yeah. and um, the, there's really good. Stu- that the, so you, when you're reading the Bible, and you that's it's really helpful because when you get to a bit that's difficult, it's like, what does that mean? There's some notes immediately on the mm. page right there mm. that you can. Refer, oh, okay, it means that, and so you can. That's yeah, yeah. that's a great place to start. It also shows you that the beautiful link in scripture that stuff in the Old Testament wasn't disconnected from the New Testament so for mm. instance the story where um, where Abraham took Isaac up Mount um, Mount, Sinai. Uh, Mount Sinai to sacrifice Mount Sinai. him I don't think it was Mount Sinai the uh, mountain the mountain we can always trust that <laughs> 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 
him on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the mom yeah, maybe takes him up to sacrifice um, yeah. his son. Someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kind of language that he uses yeah. is the same mountain Snow that Jesus died on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah it's the same mountain that Jesus died on. And yeah, I snowed it. And I think I, I, I found that in my study Bible. No, so it's so mm. fascinating that the uh, a father sacrificing his son um, using gen- the gentle language that Abraham yeah. used with Isaac was what was going to happen a few thousand years. It later. shows why it's so important to keep reading the new and the old and the new and the old. Yeah. If you want to find Christ in the Old Testament, you've got to get to know Jesus first, mm. in, in one sense. Well, you've got, sense, you've got yeah. to know his style, what he's about, what his mission was. Um, so when he says in John 5, you guys, you diligently search the Old Testament scriptures looking for life but fail to realize they actually testify about me, mm. you actually, once you get to know him, you can go back to the scriptures and find him. Like You can almost smell him. Oh, yeah, look, he's there, he's there, he's there. Mm. I remember one of the elders in this church um, who's, who's um, retired now, he used to say the the Old Testament is in the new revealed and the new is in the old concealed. Mm-hmm. And But you have to keep doing both backwards and forwards mm-hmm. and the more you keep going backwards and forwards, just the more you see it. Um, so it is really helpful the first time you pick a Bible to read through the Old Testament just to understand that the mm-hmm. history and the climax and the pointing towards it, then finally he arrives on the scene. But then realise it's like when you watch a movie, a big twist at the end. You go back and watch the movie again and you see mm-hmm. it all along. I didn't realise yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with Christ oh, in the Christ. Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd also say another like the movie Sixth Sense where you don't realise that Bruce Willis is dead. <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 What a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible oh, project. When he says he sp- I speak videos. to dead people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving aside. The Bible project well, I was videos yeah, yeah. is also really good. Be- and be- because, especially when you're starting to read maybe a book of the Bible that you've not read before, watching What's that video, video, five, yeah. ten minute video that's going to tell you, okay, this is what it's about, this Brilliant. is the context, and even how it connects to Christ, the New Testament, that sort of thing, so it's just good to have in mind so that mm. when you read into the detail, yeah. the detail is in a context for you. So good. Um, last few minutes on our first episode of Live Lunch, we've got something big yes. happening next Wednesday. It's happening. Big Wednesday. If you can't see it on that camera, I apologize. Big Wednesday is happening next Wednesday. What is this Big Wednesday? It's big. And it's, it's on Wednesday. It's big. What more? Um, three days of prayer and fasting, building towards a big evening of worship, prophetic and prayer. Towards the end of 2019, um, know the elders as a team um, and a lot of the core team guys just just felt going into this year, um, it's a time to re-engage with the way we're praying and seeking God as a church um, in worship, in prophetic um, particularly, um, and in prayer. Um, John Hosea used to be an elder here. He was really helpful um, back in the day saying actually a church always needs to reinvent the way it prays because I think we can get stale sometimes or just get a bit predictable, which is just life. That's no one's heart. Mm. Um, Also, there's, there's always new people kind of coming through who don't know much about prayer. So we felt actually we have these three weeks of prayer, which are good, and then we have sort of little site prayer meetings in between. What if instead of having these three big weeks and these other little prayer meetings, let's go for six blocks throughout the year where we call the whole church to three days of prayer and fasting. Let's get hungry for God. Let's mm. not eat together as a community for three whole days. Let's hunger after God. And in your own communities, small groups, marriages, families, seek God, pray together. Monday, Tuesday, find time as guys, girls, get together and pray. But then on the Wednesday night, let's all get together and let's hunger after God. Let's seek him. Take him at his word in Jeremiah when it says, when you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. <coughs> that is a night we're going to find God. Mm. And we're believing he's wow. going to speak to us and, and <coughs> stir things in us. Um, and he's got a vision for this year far bigger than our little puny ones. Mm. And he wants to do things mm. in our hearts as a community mm. um, and as a church. And it's so exciting when you're in a prayer mm. meeting and God speaks. Mm. You know, when you've been in those meetings where somebody brings a dream or brings a word and it's like, wow, this is definitely a now word mm. for this year. And it's just hitting people around the room just by the Holy Spirit and the revelation of God and what he wants to do. We're definitely just expectant for God to do that and mm. hungering for that. So, yeah, it's an opportunity to just to re-engage. Uh, maybe some people who've not been at a premier for a while or thought, oh, no, prayer meetings aren't really for me. Well, that's just not true. If you're a Christian, if you've got Christ in you, he's a praying God and mm. we want to 
just help just disciple people into some just basically like how how to pray how to pray in a community how to seek god together um and people who've never been to a prayer meeting before boy this is one not to miss mm. we want to just help people to seek god so mm. yeah it might look and feel a little bit different to some of our prayer meetings we're gonna the formats over the year will change we're gonna experiment with different things um but the heart of it is we want to seek god together mm. and we're not coming with any agenda except to be here for you and come and speak to us and yeah and God is a live God and he's a living God yeah and so anything could happen yeah and Big Wednesday I think um, do you know the surfing reference to Big Wednesday mm. is, it, or is it a movie or something mm. from the like 80s or 90s it's yeah. like a big wave in Hawaii or something that mm. came and it was like a massive deal that Wednesday really is that what it's about yeah, yeah. I didn't know it's, it's this huge we we know know about about it. <laughs> yeah we're not a good one yeah. It's about a, a big, big, like off the charts wave that people wow. have ever seen. It's, it's, it's more to do an encounter with a natural phenomena rather than a surfing thing. Yeah, and I yeah. think it's just meeting with. I'll bring the board natural. shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> board shorts, surfboards, um, your wax. That'd be fantastic. Thank yeah, you. Great. But I think a, a lot of um, a lot of the things that help us with when we when we came up with the Big Wednesday brand was a lot of preparation goes into the Big Wednesday. Uh, so so you don't you prepare yourself to meet the wave. You mm-hmm. don't just rock up with your board and expect oh, see, to see right. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the most keen ardent surfers are the guys who who plan who, sh- who schedule the whole year yeah, around yeah. being at this place when this happens and, and just so the the Sunday Monday and Tuesday are times of just preparing ourselves to meet with God yeah, yeah. Uh, and setting aside times saying God yeah. we want to meet with you we, we want to hear your voice that's why the fasting is, yeah. is important I think prayer meetings where people have fasted are a different deal because mm-hmm. it's like man mm-hmm. Like I could have been having McDonald's right now, or I could have been eating breakfast, but I'm actually here because mm. this is more important. And, the and then the prophetic words always mm. seem to be around mm. food. <laughs> yeah. Strange, isn't it? Yeah. Like, come on, guys, it's not helpful. Yeah, I'll just see a katsu curry. Yeah. 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 Oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> is there anything you're looking forward to about Big Wednesday, Matt? Yeah, I I think I noticed when you are even on social media and you sort of follow different other churches and that sort of thing. Maybe it's the fact that it's it's a round number with the year this year of 2020. I think, think but. I think that's a super. Wow, we've half an hour to the thing. <laughs> finally, said it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think churches across the country are really sort of think. Right, we need to pray this year, mm. and I think that's a, as a sense of, as an eldership. It's not like we haven't been haven't been praying, mm. um, but we're really calling the church to to pray and seek God more, and because there's more. Um, uh, for us from God, and that's that's if we if we didn't expect that God would bless us this year, you know what's the point of praying? Mm-hmm. But actually, we we know God is good. We know He's good for us. And just like what I was saying before about sometimes the blessings of God are found when we when we really seek Him. You know, when, when, when you seek with all your heart, you'll you'll not fail to find Me. And uh, He He sometimes God just blesses us mm. all the time God blesses us just where we don't deserve it and the other times he said now come on and really seek me and having these extra times in the year making it more consistent every couple of uh, months through the year and really diving into God is an exciting mm. place to be exciting uh, we've run out of time. Thank, of time thank you so much for joining us on our first episode of season 4 and spending a lunch break with us have a blessed year and maybe see you next Wednesday but we'll see you next Tuesday on live lunch again but next yeah. Wednesday big Bye-bye. Wednesday thank you for having us Bye-bye.